Hi, I'm Jimenez Lai. Um, I studied architecture. Uh, I'm now practicing. Uh, I have a studio called Bureau Spectacular. Uh, the range of things that we design, propose, uh, range from spoons to cities, and sometimes architecture is uh, in the middle somewhere. Uh, I come from a medical family, so some doctors, pharmacists, and stuff like that. So you can imagine this is very disappointing. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, I always really loved drawing, uh, especially really loved reading comics. Uh, you know, but on the other hand, I've always, always been really interested in history. Uh, and so especially whenever I have a chance to study, um, you know, our relationship with archaeology, you know, and consistently architecture is um, a vehicle from which we understand past cultures. And so I became very interested in how you know cultures are represented constructed and it becomes a kind of contemporary fluid matter if we're in the middle of making it uh, so that's I, I would say these are some of the motivations for studying architecture i study at the university of toronto um, i was living in toronto um, and after my undergraduate degree uh, i decided that you know maybe i try architecture I, um, yeah so it was it was more of a local situation than, it, it, than it, yeah, but then you know I, I'm happy it was there because I think the the school at the time was going through moments of transition, um, and so for someone like me, for example, who's not very good at following rules, there weren't a lot of rules at the time, <laughs> and uh, so I was able to um, do a lot of nonsense. Uh, I'm Taiwanese Canadian. I was born in Taiwan. Uh, but I would say a, a significant portion of my life, I identify also as being from Toronto. So both Taiwan and Toronto are places that I think of as being home. Uh, but at this point in time, Los Angeles is also beginning to feel like home, you know. Uh, Do you live uh, in, in these two places? Uh, Toronto? Toronto, Taiwan and... And Los Angeles. No, I also lived in Chicago for six years, you know. Uh, a little bit New York, a little bit Phoenix, uh, a little bit Rotterdam, uh, you know, a little bit Ohio. You know, I think I went through quite a number of places, but I think Toronto, Taiwan, and now LA uh, feel very significant. I mean, the version of Toronto that I came to know is that it was just unknowingly so cosmopolitan. Um, you know, the high school that I went to, if you were to take a size sample, um, me encountering someone like me or any other race, uh, any other, you know, uh, uh, religion or creed, I think it's very common and people really didn't think much of it. You know, the kids never, I mean, there was, there weren't really, I mean, ideas of racism are things that we hear about from, you know, other places. We just, it was just very naturally cosmopolitan. So I think that was a very positive, um, environment even even you know like middle school i think you know middle school we were just mixed a mixed bag of so many different kinds of people there were a lot of people from iran for example lots of people from uh, lots of russian jewish people um koreans you know hong kong uh philippines you know there's just a lot of people jamaicans uh, and so i would say toronto was this and the thing about that type of environment is Culturally, uh, there's enough population from almost everywhere that the food are designed for the people who are from there. So which what I'm trying to say is food was really good yeah. in Toronto. <laughs> but Taiwan, I think, you know, uh, definitely also uh, has a long term influence on me. Um, it's a super weird. I mean, as, as, as you must know, geopolitically, it's a, it's it has always been in a very fragile state you know uh is it is a considered a country are we allowed to call it a country you know uh, the ambiguity of whether or not it exists uh kind of also apply to the way that i, I later view the world you know are, are 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 some of the ideas of what you believe to be real really real i think um, but then again you know but if you do believe that it's real maybe it is real so these are some of the things that being a taiwanese uh, we automatically are born into uh, these kinds of questions. I feel lucky that I have had people that I consider to be mentors and 
there are quite a number of them that I would love to name. I mean, back in Toronto, uh, Ante Liu was a super important person for me. But uh, alongside him, I, I also had a chance to meet Michael, meet Michael Meredith uh, when I was in Toronto, uh, who also became a very influential figure for me. Uh, along the way, I also got to meet uh, Bob Somo, uh, the theorist who continues to have a, a deep impact on the way I work and think. Uh, but there are also others that, despite meeting or not knowing really well, uh, linger on. Uh, like I've always admired Rem Kohlhaas, for example. I've, I've uh, just uh, Im imagined, uh, you know, let's say if there's a cultural practice that doesn't necessarily only produce buildings, but uh, regard the discourse around buildings. Uh, Kohlhaas is this type of figure that I really look up to. I've also never, I've ne I mean, I've met Rem, but you know, I don't think there was a deep connection. Uh, but I have never met John Haydock. Uh, John Haydock died uh, by the time I, I was learning more about him. Um, <clears throat> luckily, I did have a s student of John Haydock's, um, uh, Diane Lewis, and I had a chance to learn about John Haydock, and uh, I think he was very influential for me. I mean, I think I think maybe I should also mention that I still uh, have a chance to, I still text with uh, Jose Uberi sometimes, who's also a really important mentor figure for me. Uh, I got to meet Jose. Jose is the last person standing who used to work for Le Corbusier, and um, he's 87. And the other day I was making a model and just sent him a photo and, and just like, He's not really 86, 87. He's just a designer who's... Kind of <laughs> he's still working? He's, I think so. I think so. I haven't seen him in a while, but we still chat sometimes. Uh, it's, it's very nice. And, you know, alongside Jose, while in Ohio, uh, I was able to not only be, meet uh, Bob Somo, I also got to meet uh, Jeff Kipnis. Uh, both were uh, still very impactful meetings for me. Um, it happened maybe a little too quickly. I, I started teaching um, in my mid to late 20s. Um, and yeah, I, I guess this developmental stage of being able to work in other offices uh, suddenly was interrupted. Uh, and while I was teaching, I think I had a lot of time to think and develop. Uh, and I think accidentally uh, something, some, something like a practice just began to emerge out of all of my activities. Uh, that year, I won a competition to build a room, and uh, it's a room that rotates, and I was able to uh, realize it. But once that was realized, I, I just thought you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of potential to do more with, you know. Yeah, so um, I've always been interested in storytelling, you know, like that we'll say buildings with a story to tell or um, people who are in buildings and they have a story. You know, I think both ways are kind of interesting. Um, and representationally, it comes about ways that we tell such stories. You can communicate, uh, you know, buildings with stories or stories inside of buildings through maybe drawings or maybe short films or models. Uh, I've always, I would say that's always been a core interest for me in, in, in architecture. I don't really have a routine. It's hard to have a routine. I mean, I do. Um, I mean, I, I do like to take walks. So I walk. Um, um, yeah, I, I do like to, you know, as much as I can uh, learn about uh, like con contemporary understandings of history. You know, so there are. Um, I mean, almost weekly productions of uh, people talking about other cultures, and I, 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 I try to stay up to date. Um, but I'm also flying, flying, flying a lot. So, so going to the airport, you know, I, I don't drive. I live in LA and I don't drive, which is maybe a strange thing to do. So I, I do enjoy taking my walks. I'm working on a parking lot. so. Par parking is something that, you know, uh, that's like, so for example, if you pass over one of those things, um, no, yeah, um, like this is a one to, one to five model of the parking stop. 
<laughs> I think uh, every culture has, every country probably has these these things, and they're usually made of concrete. And uh, we're maybe one of this is one of the things that we're developing, maybe coming up with a different way for cars to stop or for humans to interface with, uh, you know, parking lots. So that's one thing. Uh, there's a house. Um, I mean, you know, we're working. Uh, we've worked on some houses in the past that unfortunately uh, discontinued. Uh, but as of today, the day that we're talking, uh, we're, we just got the news that we're going to move forward with the house. Uh, so there's, there's a new project, which is a house um, and a, uh, for one person, I mean, for one family, I guess. Uh, so that's the first house in construction. Yeah, yeah. So this is exciting we're we're going to be working on this uh there are also a couple of exhibitions that we're you know uh, one where we you know are in the midst of designing it another uh, we would showcase some of our work um, so the you know a, a, a range of things i guess as I, as i mentioned in like mid to late 20s i i started teaching uh, in the united states there are a few schools with this idea of the fellowship, like teaching fellowship. And luckily I was able to do one in Ohio. Uh, it's called the Lefebvre Fe Le Le Fe Le Fe Fellowship. Uh, and, um, you know, so I started teaching, but uh, how, what do I teach? I've taught almost every level from first year undergraduate to final year uh, graduate degree. And so, um, you know, with the more senior projects, I sometimes write um, briefs that are suggestive of, you know, uh, utopian speculations uh, type of approach, you know. And they're also f formal language that sometimes I uh, intermix into the statements. You know, we talk about certain curves or colors or textures, material, you know, uh, how, you know, these kinds of sensibilities uh, whether or not they can be taught, we try it. And does it have something to do with um, my personal work? There are times that it, they do, but there are times that they don't. Yep. Mm -hmm. If we focus on the word experiment, you know, it implies maybe some kind of uh, edge beyond something that we don't know yet. Uh, it's hard to know what we don't know, you know, and there are, I mean, times that we have to also be very good at what we do know. You know, if if no one's teaching what we do know, um, then we're going to become, you know, an industry of amateurs. <laughs> uh, but I think so. So it's I don't think it's necessarily, you know, like a binary, like you do something, you know, or you don't do something, you don't. Because, you know, within the things that you do know, there are also different types of buildings, uh, different types of projects. And within the things that we don't know, I think, you know, some people might be focused on technology, other people might be focused on philosophy, um, other people, another might be focused on media or multimedia, you know, I think these are, I, I think it's healthy to have a, a wide variety of, uh, you know, projects uh, in, in our field. So, but how to teach it, I don't, I, I mean, I, can, I think the best way to teach is to explain the context, you know, like explain the cultural context of, uh, why something might be interesting to learn or at the end of the day the, the best way to learn is doing it i think if i were starting over as a student i think it would be great if somebody told me yeah just do it and then <laughs> and then you'll figure it out <laughs> but then if somebody's advising you explaining you the context while you're doing it it might become uh, clear uh, that some of the decisions are rational you know, there are times that I'm convinced that an architect uh, doesn't make buildings. <laughs> I mean, we're not out there, you know, um, with our own hands. We're not out there laying brick, you know. We're in environments like this, producing drawings, we're producing uh, mediums to communicate why a building or how a building or what, what a building, you know, uh, so I think I think so there, so there are times that I wonder if the building is accidental for in this entire process. Um, I think, you know, uh, on the one hand, 
maybe help digest what's um, present. I think, you know, maybe that's one of the roles of an architect. Um, hopefully we're seeing the picture a bit, uh, the spectrum maybe qu quite um, clearly enough that once we hear about it in a context, you know, like whether it's a human yeah. that needs a house or a city that needs, you know, yeah. um, some kind of solutions. I feel like the architect's mind is a little different in that they, they are able to listen to a lot of things and process it and uh, see things that maybe somebody else didn't see and uh, eventually produce drawings or images or so to uh, convey, you know, <clears throat> uh, speculative ways that other futures can exist out of this context. It's a very hard question because, you know, uh, on the one hand, you're asking about maybe regrets. And then on the other, you're uh, asking about goals. Uh, so the past, you know, do you have regrets? In the future, do you have goals? But by identifying goals, we're only setting up regrets. <laughs> no, I mean, I, th I, I mean, architecture is very hard to learn. It's super difficult, you know. Uh, it was very difficult to learn um, the various, let's say, philosophical frameworks from which you can think about architecture. It's, it's been very difficult for me. Uh, I can't say that I have properly handled it, but I've been working on it, you know. Um, for instance, the way that people talk about certain French philosophers, you know, I, 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 I do make an effort to uh, try to understand it. So that's one thing that was difficult to understand. Uh, other things that are difficult to understand, you know, for example, just simply how do materials meet materials? <laughs> how do you, uh, how, how do you, I don't know, structurally keep them stable? I mean, these are all not intuitive, I think. Um, <laughs> In a more practical way. You yeah, so, so there are things that are always difficult and, you know, over time I'm still wanting to, you know, learn more and understand more. I mean, as we look ahead to the future, I don't know. Um, hopefully learning to um, um, well, I don't know. It's, it's hard to know what I don't know. It's, <laughs> I, I've, uh, by now, uh, 2020, uh, the idea of the multiverse theory is very widely accepted thanks to the Marvel movies uh, or other, you know, like uh, comic book movies. Uh, uh, but I've always been, um, I mean, for, for some time, I've always been, let's say, optimistic about the idea of the multiverse theory, you know. Maybe just because I uh, are, am I on one, one track, it doesn't mean that there are other futures that I, you know, didn't do. Um, so 